my husband hasn't seen his kids in quite some time. So now he's re-entering into their lives. And, well, to put it simple, he's rich. He got a large retirement when he retired from his lifelong job. I'm talking seven figures. But now he's blowing it all on his kids, which don't get me wrong. That's not a bad thing, but I'm trying to tell him they are taking advantage of him. Am I the a-hole for thinking that my husband should not spend his money on his kids because they're old enough to take care of themselves? I don't know if I'm in the a-hole situation here, but everyone else seems to think so, so I've decided to ask for a final opinion. I feel that my concerns are valid and I'm disappointed in my husband for not taking my advice. I know that this will only end badly and no, I'm not being sour just because he chooses to spend money on his biological children. I'm not bitter because we cannot have kids of our own even though I might sound like it. This is what his ex-wife and kids have said to me in the text messages that we exchanged over the past couple of days. I just don't think that it's wise to buy a car and a house for them. They're still young and capable of taking care of themselves. They also have really good jobs and can easily get a loan. But instead of allowing them to buy their own assets and, well, as a good father should, he's decided to just spoil them. He says that it's to make up for the lost time, but I think that he needs to spend time with them instead of buying them stuff. But what do I know? I'm just the younger ex-wife. In case I've not mentioned, my husband and I have a 20-year gap. He's 65 while I'm 44. We met about four years ago. I was a widower and had not dated since I lost my husband 10 years ago. I lost my husband and daughter on the same day about a decade ago when a drunk driver took the wrong turn at night. The car was a ride-off, and my daughter was hospitalized in a coma. I did not know that my husband was injured. He hit it well. What I did know was that he had taken himself off of our insurance so that he could cover more things for me and our daughter. He is still the most selfless person I've ever had the chance to meet. My current husband has good qualities, but my first husband, Hendrick, he was something else. He was in pain for several days, hiding it from me because I was so worried about my little girl. Well, our little girl. And then one day he collapsed. We rushed him to the hospital, but they were not able to treat the infection, especially since he had so much inflammation. They had faith that he would get better, but he did not make it through the night. A couple days later, my daughter met her demise, and yes, their loss absolutely broke me. It traumatized me to the max. From then on, I was always aware that life is temporary, and that it's not to be wasted. I was also scared that something like this would happen to me again, for I realized that death was close and always by. It was only ten years later that I met my husband, Evan. Evan was way older than me, yes, but he did not seem that old when I met him. He was a no-nonsensical man, very composed and very serious about his health. When I met him, I thought that he was the most boring man in the room. <laughs> All he spoke about was working and the gym. I gave him a nickname of Jim Bro, which my best friend Natalie has called him for years now. We met on a blind date at a market, and there was music, dancing, bottomless cocktails. One of the most fun nights of my life. My friend Natasha convinced me to join the blind date event. She said that I've been mourning for far too long and I have to move on. I also deserve to be happy and I'm thankful that she gave me that push to join the event. I met several gentlemen that night, but none that I really connected with. That was until I met him. The first minute of the date was boring. All he talked about was business and the gym and I was ready to fall asleep right then and there. But then, when he noticed my tattoo, the one I got when I lost the two people I loved most in this world, I told him everything, the truth, as bluntly as possible. Then he told me that he hoped one day my heart would fill the void and the love and light I once had. He understood it, for he had also lost two kids to his cheating wife. She took the house, the kids, half his money 15 years ago, and he only saw his kids when they were older. 
and he was not close to them anymore. Our conversation turned deep very, very fast, for we were both healing. We saw each other several times after that, and somehow my heart started to loosen, and I found myself falling for him. I didn't care about the age gap. I cared about how safe he made me feel. We got engaged shortly after and have been married for four years now. We're each other's companions, and we adore each other so much. We keep each other young and remind each other that we love each other every single day. We text all day long, making sure that our communication's always there. We tell each other the truth, always, no matter how hard it is. Marriage is not easy, especially when you had to do it twice. But we tried our hardest. We decided that we did not want to have kids from the beginning, and I still cannot imagine bringing another life into this world, only for it to be taken from me. No matter how long it's been. Well, he, on the other hand, is old, and he said he's done having kids. He does not have the energy to raise another child. Recently, he resigned from his job where he works as a systems engineer, and he got a very nice bonus. He only told me that he retired, and he did not tell me what his package was. I own my own salon, and I don't really rely on him for money, so I did not ask him about it. I did, however, find his letter when I was watching his clothing, and I did open it, I put it on his side of the bed, and went back to minding my own business. A day later, I heard commotion downstairs in the driveway. I rushed out to see his son, Sean, jumping up and down. In front of him was a car with a bow. His sister, dad, and mom were all standing there, and I went to join them without asking what was going on. Evan took us all out for lunch afterward, and to be honest, we drove back home. I asked him what that was even about, and he said that he wanted to do something for his son. I asked if it was not a bit too much to buy him such an expensive car. I don't know much about vehicles, but I do know expensive from cheap ones when I see a car. He did this thing he does sometimes where he selectively listens. He told me that he needed to get ready because he had a meeting later that night. It was going to be his last few days at work, and he wanted to leave on a good note. Well, I decided not to start a fight. I wondered how much, well, he might have gotten after all. He was with the company for about 40 years. So, I went back to the drawer and saw how much he got from that paper. Let's just say that it made me swallow hard. My husband and I live a very comfortable life, but the money that he got, well, put him in a whole different class. Like any other wife, I wondered what he was going to do with it. I know it's not my money, and some people are going to tell me that I should have minded my own business, but as someone who's in a relationship where we share and make decisions together, we operate like that. We shared all of our financial decisions with each other, and that's normal. I didn't say anything to him, but when, a week later, he bought his daughter an apartment, I had to speak up. I asked him if maybe he did not want to invest the money into a trust fund so that his children can access it later in life. They both work, and they can afford simple things like a house and a car for themselves. He told me, he was not able to do things for them for their first time, so he was doing what he could now. Well, I kept quiet about it, but it did not sit well with me at all. I felt as if since, well, this is his retirement fund, he should also make smart choices with it. Those kids do not even visit him. He has to call them so they can come and see him. So, a couple days later, the issue arrived. I was trying to buy myself some new shoes with my money, and keep in mind that these shoes are for work. So then I asked him if I should buy the ones that are, well, a two-for-one special, or the more expensive brand that's known to last longer but would cost me about three times the price. Since I was shopping online, I put the more expensive ones in the shopping cart, and just checked the shipping. I told him that I was going to get expedited shipping, and he told me that I was wasting money. Well, I told him I was not. 
Most of my shoes have suffered weather damage, and he told me that I have a closet full of shoes and a second-hand store has shoes I can go to. Even as I think about what he said, I'm making a face right now. I wish you could see it. I made a face at him, and he told me that I was being dramatic. Well, I asked how buying shoes with my own money and getting quick shipping for about $30 well, was such a big deal. When he was busy buying houses and cars with his seven-figure bonus, he asked if I went through his stuff, trying to change the topic, but I stood my ground. I've been silent long enough, and I told him all that I said at the beginning of his post, and he got very mad. He's gotten this mad, well, at me before, and when he gets to this level of mad, I know that I've taken it too far. But then, of course, I did not, well, take the cues that he was mad. He then just stood up and marched off to bed. He did not talk to me for the rest of the night, and then he went and told his baby mama everything. She called me early in the morning and we exchanged words and she called me a jealous gold digger. While I told her to mind her own business and worry about how she's still single. I was so mad that I wanted to leave the client I was working on and head over to her house. But guys, I'm 40 years old, not 14, so I hung up. After work, I checked my phone and his kids were all up on me too, calling me a gold digger. I... I've been with this man for five years. I own a high-end salon, guys, and I've got investments. What would I want his money for? What's up, everybody? Mr. Reddito here. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. So it looks like OP is in a bit of a pickle. The kids are calling her a gold digger. She's having arguments with her husband. And I do have every single update right here for you guys. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for daily videos, and let's jump into this update. As I'm writing this, I'm heartbroken. People took the narrative that I was jealous and ganged up on me. The matter did not die down. It became a constant talk in our household, and it became difficult to even start a conversation. To make it worse, his kids started hanging out at our house even more. He kept on buying them more and more expensive gifts while he did not spend a single cent on me. And do you know what he told me? He said that he worked hard for his money way before we were married and I was not entitled to a dollar. Damn. Well, here I thought that I found myself a good honest man to love me, but in the end, I got tired of fighting and making noise. Everyone thought that I was crazy, and I had no right to tell him what to do with his money anyway, so I cried myself to sleep most nights. He started sleeping in the guest room, something that he's never done before. It was painful to live in this house, I'll say. Just the thought of coming back home made me want to cry. But my mom did not raise a quitter. I love that man, and I know that there's still the real him in there. His kids are showing him fake love right now, but he will realize it soon. Do you want to know how I know that they don't really love him? Over the years, they've not visited him or invited him to their life achievements. His daughter did not even let him walk her down the aisle. So, she let his mother's boyfriend at the time do it. I've watched how they treated him as dispensable for many years, and when he got sick... With a hernia, I was at his side. His ex-wife was on a holiday and his kids could not even take time off of work. At the same time, I was still working for someone else and had to call in sick for weeks. When I came back, my new boss threw me out, embarrassing me publicly because she was so mad at me. Me and this man have been through so much together, but it seems that he's forgotten and it just makes me sad. I spend more time at work these days than I do at home. At least at work, I'm surrounded by my customers and my employees who were always happy to see me. I never thought that this man would treat me like such a gold digger. When I met him, he was making good money, but he was no Bill Gates. He was living in a bachelor flat and literally lived at the gym. I made his house into a home, and this is how he treats me. And then there's his ex-wife, Clara, who thinks that she's the lady of the house these days. She's really testing me, and I see it. 
The other day, she was sitting in front seat, and it took so much of me not to yank her hair out. I kept my calm, knowing that fighting her will only push him towards her. I spoke to my mother, and she told me not to react. She said that Clara is just looking to make me panic so that I start slipping up, and then she finds her way back into his heart. I know her. I've known her for over five years. She's an opportunist. I have seen it from the way that she makes her kids pay for every single thing that she has, even though she's a senior manager. So, I've decided to keep quiet and just let him be. I know that he's making a big mistake by spoiling those kids, but I also got that now he's older, he wants to be surrounded by his kids, and the only way that he can be around them is if he keeps on spending money on them. The latest thing that's gotten them is a three-month cruise. Of course, yours truly is not invited. I mean, three months. He said that either way, I will not be able to leave my business unattended for 90 days. Yeah, that's true. I can't. Even though I have a good supervisor, leaving it alone for three months would be shooting myself in the foot. But guess who's going with him? If you guessed his ex-wife, then you would be correct. I hope they have a wonderful vacation. If you did not catch it, I'm being sarcastic. I'm so over this. It's going to be a long, hard summer. Update number two, two months later. Guys, I'm going to jump right into it. Guess who just got divorce papers in the mail? Yeah, me. He sent me a message telling me that he just thinks that it's best that we separate. He's offered me good alimony, and he says that we're not the right fit. Spending time with his kids has made him realize that they complete him. Well, okay, that's good for him. I'm happy for him. However, I'm not going to sign this until he hands it to me in person like a man. I've dedicated five years of my life to him, and I deserve respect. And people said that I should love again and open up my heart. What a load of utter nonsense. I used to think that that man I love was in there, but now I don't think so. I used to think that that man was there, but, well, what I'm going to do is get myself a nice bottle of wine and watch some reality television while I complain to him about my best friend. She did not know the things were this bad until I broke down to, or, to her at work a week ago. I've always been that person to keep marital problems on the hush-hush. I trust her more than anyone else, though, so I do tell her the serious things. I just don't report every single minor squabble. I sit down and talk it through with my partner, so she knows about this, and it's on my side with it. She's still at work right now, but she'll come over later and enjoy some wine. So I'm venting to all of you until she's here, because if I don't, I will literally explode. Update number three. Three months later. Hey guys, it's been about three months since me and my husband separated. He's gotten worse and refuses to change his behavior. His mom found out about everything that he's been doing and she's on my side. She says that she doesn't even recognize him anymore. He's always out with his son and daughter even in the middle of the week. I used to see their social media updates, but after a while, I got sick of it and decided to block him on social media. Soon after he came back from the cruise, he came to fetch his things from the house. He told me that I could keep the apartment and he would make sure that I was well taken care of. He then told me that since we're divorcing, he thinks that it's okay to start seeing other people. Well, guess who the laughing stock of the town is now? He's often seen out with women 20 years younger than me. I see the looks of pity I get from our friends and from my clients, but I keep my head up high. Instead, I've decided to focus on expanding my business. There is a current vacant unit at a mall close by, one that a lot of people frequent. At the moment, I'm talking to some agents about renting it out. Once I have it, I will open up a second store. I already have people who are ready to invest in my business. Right now, it's the only thing that's going well in my life. A couple days ago, I decided to go through my old stuff in my spare bedroom. I've not opened some of the boxes for years, but this week, 
I decided to face it and go ahead and see what was in them. I found some of my daughter's old toys and clothes that were still good. I packed everything into neat piles, then in the morning, I donated everything to the charity office. Then I went to a restaurant I used to frequent with my late husband for the first time in years. I ordered what he used to order, and for a while, I was lost in a world where he was alive and telling me his corny jokes. I reveled at how unfair life could be. I thought I had found someone who could bring the light back into my life, but instead he's made my days so much darker. To finish off my day, I went to the cemetery and gave them both flowers. A daisy. I could have sworn that I felt two of them hugging me, and it was a good day to re-energize. When I went back home, I made the decision that I've kept quiet for far too long. I've been clinging to this marriage that's failing for so long, and it's time for me to cut him off. I have the memories of my loved ones to keep me company for the rest of my life. It's not so bad. Update number three. I told him. I told him that they do not care about him and they only wanted his money, but he did not listen. Now his precious kids have discarded him because he does not have money anymore. Let me explain. So, I was in the middle of my divorce proceedings when my husband did not show up. He wasted the court's time and everybody was pretty upset. I asked everyone where he was, including his kids. They did not seem to care and they told me that they were not his keepers. I then found out that he was couch surfing. He did not even have money to put patrol in his car. I was surprised at how things had changed so quickly. The last time that I'd spoken to him, he had a younger woman on his side and he was partying like there was no tomorrow. He used to look like he was in his 50s and was in great shape. Now, he had a proper grandpa body and he had aged quite a bit. He looked stressed and was shaky when he saw me. For a while, he thought that I was a mirage. I asked him to tell me what happened and then he told me exactly what I told him would happen. People thought that I was jealous when I tried to warn him about people that he was giving such importance to. He told me that his friends and his kids milked him of every cent until he was dry. He ran out of money about a month ago but kept on borrowing because he thought some investments he had would pay through. Not only will they never pay out, but he's now in a lot of debt. He has already retired and even he is looking for a job again. He might not get hired because of his age. He told me that he did not have anything to give me in the settlement except for that apartment. He said that he was very sorry for not listening to me when I tried to warn him. Now, his daughter will not even let him stay in the house that he bought for her. I have nothing to say. I've said all that I could say over and over for the past year, but he hasn't listened to me. I told him that he could have amicable divorce where none of our assets had to be involved, and I also told him that I would cover all the costs. Update number four. Eight months since the divorce. It's eight months, guys, and I've just received a call. After we broke up, he said that his daughter allowed him to stay with her while he figured out his finances. Well, he did manage to work for about six months before she and her brother decided that they were done babysitting him. So they sent him to an old age home, which is where he's been for the past two months. I got a call saying that he wanted to see me at the beginning of this week. So, I went to see him, wondering what he needed, and he told me that everyone had turned their back on him and left him there to die. He did not feel like it was the right place for him to be, but his daughter made it almost impossible for him to leave. He asked me if I was willing to be his caretaker so that they would release him from the old age home. His daughter was serious. She lied really well and made it seem like he could not live on his own. At the time, he was not feeling his best in dealing with substance, well, some withdrawals. She told him it was either rehab or the old age home, but she was not going to take care of him for a day more. She said that well, she had her own life to live and so did her brother. She went back to how she had been for all these years, a person who does not care about her father. 
I did not have to tell him that I warned him. That was better left unsaid, but needless to say. He begged and begged me to let him stay with him again. He says that being here is killing him, and he knows that he can do more and get back on his feet. He feels like he has been sent here to die, not to rest. I know him, and this place is not like him. He's an active person who likes to keep his mind and body stimulated. He has no one else. His ex-wife is a no-go zone, and his mother is old, barely able to take care of herself. Luckily, she's staying with his sister and is well taken care of. His friends all have families and cannot afford to feed him one extra mouth. I can't just refuse to take him back without thinking about this. After all, he did give me some of the best years of my life, but he's also given me hell for the past two years. Do you remember that I used to cry myself to sleep every night when he excluded me? I had to deal with his wife and kids calling me a gold digger. They told me that I should give birth to my own kids instead of trying to interfere with their relationship with their father. Then there's the fact that when we separated, he was already dating women younger than me. That's a lot to forgive and allow him to move back in. I mean, yeah, he could get a job soon and start working, but I know that soon he will not be able to work. What if I'm able to live the rest of my life in peace because I have to take care of him? He is the one who puts himself in this position, you know. So tell me, what do you think I should do? Final update three months later. Guys, thank you for all your comments. Having other people's insights has really helped me make a decision. I've decided to forgive the past and allow him to move back in. Yes, we sleep in separate rooms. We are never going to get back together romantically. What I care about is making sure that he's healthy and happy so that he can get back to being the man that I once loved. His excessive lifestyle and unfortunately it's led to his once perfect life failing. Now he has a blood pressure and he goes for checkups often and he's also started eating healthier and often goes for walks in the afternoon. Because of his medical condition he cannot live alone since he has a serious case of high blood pressure so... That means that he'll stay with me for the foreseeable future. We're trying our best to work through our issues so that we can trust each other once again. His daughter and son have not tried to contact him since he moved back in with me. He has decided to block their numbers. I mean, he feels that they've been corrupted by their mother and they're beyond the point of change. All I can say is that what goes around comes around. All the time, and well, now they're living their lives with things that they did not buy. But just wait, they're going to have kids too. And those kids will treat them how they are treating their father. Uh, in other news, I'm finally launching my store at the end of this week. There was a lot of work to be done and so many delays. At some point, I thought that it was not going to happen. Especially when they rented out the unit to somebody else. But another one quickly opened up and I grabbed it. One that was actually at a better location in the same mall. I was able to make the necessary renovations and get the investors on board. I'm happy to say that at the end of the week, the store will open. We had a pre-launch party yesterday and it was a pop-up where we advertised our services. Since my reputation already precedes me, I have already have a full booking next week also. I'm excited, but I'm also a little nervous. This is the biggest risk that I've ever taken in a long time, and I cannot lie when I say that I do have imposter syndrome. My phone's been ringing for the past week with brands that want me to get their stock of their product. I'm so proud of myself. Ten years ago, I thought that my life was over. For the past year, it's certainly been as if I have once again lost my husband. But... I'm back with a blast. I know that I deserve to be happy. I'm not going to let anything or anyone bring me down because, well, I can do it.
What's up, everybody? Let's talk about this story. The comment section was going off. They were saying how they do not believe OP should have taken him back in and be living together. They also think that, yeah, she might say they're not going to be romantically involved anymore, but a lot of the commenters were saying, yeah, right, we already know, after a few weeks or months, you guys are going to be romantically involved again, and a lot of people were saying that OP's ex was manipulative and narcissistic. I want to know from you guys what you think about that take. Do you think that OP should have taken her ex back in after all the stuff that went wrong in their relationship? Guys, drop your thoughts down below in the comment section. If you're new to the channel, my name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories every single day, and we cover so many topics. This could be one of the topics that you like. It could be inheritance dramas. It could be cheating affairs. We cover so much. I hope to see you guys tomorrow, but do remember one thing. It's cool to be kind. See ya.